up, and I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Macy's, uh, Macy's, maybe for the the final time. I I actually had invited uh, last year Jeff Gannett uh, presented from uh, who's my successor at Macy's, and um, and we had Rachel Sheckman, who is the founder of Story, uh, which was acquired by Macy's. Certainly after that, she pre she presented, uh, and I had Hal Lawton, who is the new relatively new couple years now uh, president of. Uh, uh, Macy's scheduled to come uh, come speak, and then there all of a sudden became a a conflict this uh, this, this this week, and and, I, and he found out about it and ended up having to scramble. Uh, so I've got Hal on the hook for next year, but since he's not here uh, this year, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, about Macy's. And so so just first of all, some of the things that you know took place, and many of you already already know this. But some of the things that helped the good days, and I'm going to get to the challenging parts, the good days and the, the really super strong periods of time of growth uh, was obviously creating the first you know, national fashion uh, brand with all of the design brand names uh, on, a, on a national scale, the creation of My Macy's, localization of inventory uh, by, by store, by market, um, very quick and early on to e-commerce, creating uh, the fourth largest uh, online retailer in the country, um, pushing a ton of the capital toward not just technology uh, and, and online, but, but toward mobile first, recognizing early that everything was going to move to your phone. And, 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 and so just you know, all these various investments, even, even in social media, recognizing that you know, I was a little bit concerned about it early on, you know, 15 years ago, about social media and what that would mean and over time, I was convinced by my team, look, people are going to be talking about us. Why not join that conversation? Why not lead that conversation? And so having a different mindset, I think, early uh, about, about social media was, was very helpful. Uh, and, you know, and so there, that, then that period of time uh, that I had my tenure of CEO and chairman was, you know, lots of good, lots of good results, which we were very, very proud of. Um, but then I put this slide up here because uh, this you know, sort of is a great little uh, painting that um, is in, uh, in our home in, uh, in New York City. Uh, this is just part of it. I'll show you the rest in a minute. Uh, but this is, uh, kind of tells you, like, the experience, you know, that I was feeling back with all those numbers I showed you and the organization was feeling very good and, and li I was life on the beach, you know, sand rolling in, I got no care in the world, life is good, uh, everything looks pretty fantastic through 2015. And then there's a bigger picture, you know, of what's really going on. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and this is the actual photograph. And I have the or photograph, the actual painting in my home, and Tina's in my home. And we, we, uh, we actually, there, there's a, this is, is such relevance to me in, in my own, own life is that you just can't relax in the retail business. You can never take for granted that what happened last year, what happened last week is going to continue uh, I I onward, uh, if, by the way, positive or, or negative. You have to recognize that right behind the calm, there's always some uh, tsunami just uh, sort of waiting uh, to take you out if you're, uh, if you're not on your game, and if you're not prepared, and if you're not thinking, thinking forward. So I've kind of broken this down uh, into what I call a history of disruptions. And, um, and I go back and, and look back in the 80s, in the late 80s, and I, this is when I was in my, uh, my first CEO job. I was 35, I was the CEO of Bullock's Wilshire, and I thought I was going to retire from there 30 years later. I was happy as could, could, could be, and my company got taken over by Campo. There was no reason why, that, why Campo should have been allowed to take over federated department stores. Uh, there's only one reason, and that was money was free and flowing from the banks, and, and we were very happy to leverage up all these retailers uh, because they had strong cash flow. Well, they had strong cash flow until they didn't. And, 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 and all of a sudden, when they were highly leveraged, they were extremely vulnerable to bankruptcy. And my own company, which was a very healthy, fit, strong federated department stores with many, of the, many uh, great named department store brands, including Bloomingdale's and Bullock's and many others, uh, went from healthy earnings, consistent earnings, to bankrupt in one year. 
Uh, and that wasn't just that wasn't just uh, that wasn't just federal departments. There's many many others that went through through this whole thing. Bombwood, Tellers, B. Altman's, all of these companies either went out of business or went 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 bankrupt. Uh, Macy's actually went bankrupt shortly after that period. And so that was what I call the the era of leveraged uh, era of leverage. And then nine and then uh, 94 95 um, that became the era of consolidation. And that's when I went back. To, I was at Neiman Marcus for the six years prior, but I went back to um, Federated Department Stores with the idea that we would buy Macy's because that was when there was roll-ups beginning to take place. The only reason that those roll-ups were happening, the consolidation was happening, was because many of those, those uh, poor balance sheet companies were financially weak and they were vulnerable to being taken over, but that consolidation was actually helpful to get supply and demand back in line for the industry, and then there was a period of growth after that area of consolidation. The strong survived and grew, the, the, the weak became, were absorbed or, or went away. And then there was uh, what I call the dot-gone era. So the, the dot-com, you know, was, uh, businesses were exploding in the mid to late 90s, and I remember it very vividly, just the, the, the young 20-something-year-olds walking around, you know, with, on their, uh, on, uh, with their, all of their, their, their devices making speeches and, you know, about their amazing company that they have, and, and now they're going to be worth a billion dollars shortly. And, and, and uh, the reality was is that Wall Street woke up in 2000 and 2001, by Wall Street, I mean all investors. All investors woke up and said, most of these companies, most of these online businesses are a flash in the pan. They have no possible way to make money over the long term. So therefore, I'm going to stop funding them right now. And that happened almost overnight in the year 2000. And you went from 10,000 of these uh, startups uh, to, uh, to a huge contraction because the funding dried up. You had to have a business model that made sense. And that's when companies like Facebook and Google and others grew, grew very significantly during, the, during that area because they, in fact, did have such a, a business model. So that dot gon era was, again, an area of, uh, of things shrinking down and supply and demand coming back in line once again. And then, uh, of course, uh, at the end of 2001, and those of you retailers who have been around that long uh, can say and know that 2001 spring, before 9-11 occurred, uh, the economy was very weak. Retail consumption was very weak during that period. So we could feel a, a recession coming on before it was announced that there was going to be a recession. Well, of course, no one anticipated 9-11 and what happened then, uh, but, of but it was an immediate uh, response for, from consumers who simply stopped shopping on that afternoon. On September 11, Monday, September 11th, 2001, consumers stopped shopping and, 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 and started to reflect on what's important in their life. And it was not a new sweater, it was not a new pair of shoes, but it was my family. Uh, it, was, it was thinking about my future and it was thinking about very different things. Uh, so business stopped. Again, one, once again, and after each of these periods, there was growth again in retail. There was, there was uh, solid growth in performance in general until, of course, the, the, the next uh, era, uh, which was the, the, the financial crisis in 08 and 09, which I've labeled as the, the era of mistrust, because here you had families who always believed that their household was, was their nest egg for their future, that they could always count on that. Uh, but when suddenly their mortgage uh, had, had more paper attached to it than the actual value of the house, uh, they, they, they mistrusted that dream, and they mis mistrusted the financial institutions for, for, for even loaning them the money that they couldn't afford to repay during, those, uh, during a pullback in the economy. They, re they, they mistrusted companies who ended up having to lay off people when consumers stopped shopping, and the ripple effect, as I said, of the retail business is so large, when consumers stopped shopping, it impacted so many. And so I call this, this era, era that, this era of mistrust. And then we get to uh, uh, what happened in, in, the, in the last, uh, last couple of years. And, and, I, and I'm going to talk about that. This is what I'm going to talk about for uh, t today. And I call this the, the, the era of, of, of imbalance. And, uh, and it's uh, very clear uh, to me uh, what's happening. I think it's clear to me what's happening. Um, but um, 
the, the effect has been more gradual. It wasn't like they stopped shopping uh, on September 11th, 2001. It wasn't like what happened in 2008 and 2009 when, when Lehman Brothers collapsed and, and, and Merrill Lynch was, was, was absorbed and, and, and all this was taking place instantly and quickly and, 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 and in a very scary way. It wasn't like that. It's been much more gradual in this last, uh, this last period. But I believe there's a reason uh, a couple of them uh, for this, this, this gradual uh, but very impactful change on, uh, the, on the retail industry.